Hi, it's John Kelly. In this module, we are going to discuss the very subtle difference between comparative financial statements and corresponding figures. And as always, we want to be efficient and effective, follow professional standards, and document what we have done properly. Now, I think we're going to find that the difference between comparative financial statements and corresponding figures is a very, very, very fine difference and perhaps so small as to be irrelevant. But we'll talk about that as we go through the module. And I'm going to go to the punchline right away. The difference, it depends on whether or not you're giving a two-year audit report. In other words, if in the audit report you say, we have audited the financial statements for this year and for last year, and you explicitly refer to both years in the audit report. If it's a two-year opinion, then they have to be comparative financial statements, and they basically have to be perfectly comparative this year to last year. If there's a number this year, the comparative number has to be available for last year. And that's not so much of a big deal on the balance sheet and the income statement because, of course, there's going to be a number there. It's probably more relevant in the notes where we've got to remember that if we have a number this year, we've got to have the comparative number from last year. And I guess even if we had something from last year and there's no comparative number this year, we have to keep that in the financial statements because we have to have perfectly comparative financial statements. If it's only a one-year opinion, we just say we have audited the financial statements for this year, then we have corresponding figures, and we're going to find they don't have to be quite as perfect as comparative financial statements, or quite as perfectly comparative. Now, I've always been puzzled by this, and I've always thought, kind of, whatever we say, if we are auditing a set of financial statements that has two columns of numbers, that we're as responsible for the first column as for the second column. Now, regulators, I guess, have decided that they want to be very, very clear that the auditor is explicitly responsible for both columns. And I guess the only mistake you don't want to make is thinking if I'm just giving an opinion on this year, I have no responsibility whatsoever for last year's numbers, and that's untrue. And it starts in 710A10, A2 rather, which says, while the opinion does not extend to corresponding figures, the opinion covers the financial statements as a whole, which includes the corresponding figures. So we're back to, it really doesn't matter if you refer to two years or one year in the opinion, you're responsible for both sets of numbers. Now there are three terms in 71006, and I guess the first we really don't care about because it means both. So we start with comparative information, and comparative information is either corresponding figures or comparative financial statements. Now, IFRS, for instance, IAS 1138, requires only comparative information. So it's going to be a regulator that tells us that it has to be comparative financial statements, though if you read the rest of IFRS, Every section in IFRS goes on to effectively mandate comparative financial statements for everything. So what are comparative financial statements? Comparative financial statements, the level of detail is the same in both cases as for the current period. In other words, both columns, both all the notes are as GAAP, as in accordance with GAAP or in accordance with the accounting framework, as, so the current year and the prior period are both in accordance with the accounting framework used. Corresponding figures, on the other hand, they say the level of detail is dictated by the relevance to the current period. So someone is going to have to make a judgment, and I guess it's going to be a user that will eventually evaluate the judgment that management and the auditor made about the level of detail provided. So corresponding figures could be little bit less than gap, so to speak. And an example I've seen of that is property, plant, and equipment in the current year has to disclose cost and accumulation by category. So what you could do, I suppose, is in the prior year just disclose net. So you go 
cost this year, accumulated depreciation this year, net this year, and compare that to net in the prior year. But then you're going to have to make a decision as to whether that meets the criteria of the level of detail being dictated by the relevance to the current period. And someone could, I suppose, argue that, no, I really need to know cost and accumulated depreciation for both the current and the prior year. My other observation is it's almost as easy to do comparative financial statements as it would be to do corresponding figures once you sort of get into the swing of it. So why not? Why not just do comparative financial statements all the time, even though perhaps if you could get everyone to agree, there's some few little bits that you could skip. And I guess the risk of omitting is if you decide, decide to skip something, you're open to criticism later from a user or someone saying, well, that should have been there. And I know they only had to be corresponding figures, but I think that should have been there. So my view may as well just do comparative financial statements. When we get to the procedures, it kind of doesn't matter whether they're comparative or corresponding. We do effectively the same procedures in both. The procedures are, we have to evaluate whether the comparative information agrees to the prior financial statements. We have to think about whether the accounting policies are consistent between the years. And if they're not, we would make sure they're appropriately restated. And in either kind, if we become aware of a material misstatement in the prior numbers while doing the current audit, we would have to do more work and fix it or modify our opinion. There's also an issue with the wording in the rep letter, because the letter is to cover all years covered by the opinion. So if you're giving a two year audit opinion in the rep letter, you have to ask management to explicitly refer to both years and say, we management think the financial statement for this year and last year are okay. And that has to be explicit. Now, I suppose in a one year opinion, you could just have them refer to one year, but management would have to understand that implicitly, if we remember that first slide, implicitly they're saying that both years are okay because it's the financial statements as a whole, which include the other column. So just to save ourselves the difficulty and save ourselves the confusion of making sure we've got the right rep letter in the right circumstances, it might be prudent just to have all representation letters to explicitly cover all years and then we're not going to confuse ourselves and we'll make it clear to management that they are representing that the financial statements for both years are okay. Reporting is similar for both. You need to deal with a prior modified report and there's some guidance there and basically if you find an error in the prior statements um, you either fix it or modify your report more complex if it's a prior auditor. So it's the same for both. Two things that are important. First is if there is a prior auditor, you will have another matter paragraph. Either way, they're the same paragraph and you refer to the prior auditor, you note the type of opinion and you note the date of report. And the appendix has an example and there it is, it's pretty simple. Financial statements for the year ended were audited by another auditor who expressed an unmodified opinion on those statements on and there's the date. So very simple and it's, it applies either way. If the prior statements were unaudited, again, either way, it doesn't matter. You will say so again in an other matter paragraph. And of course you have to remember that according to 510, we have to audit the opening balances. So we would have to do some additional audit work at least to make sure that the opening balances are okay. So in the end, I kind of think it's much ado about nothing because we're going to do the same thing in both types of comparative figures or comparative information. And we're probably safer if we do comparative financial statements all the time and assume that we as the auditor and explicitly get management to say that we're on the hook for both years. So thanks for listening.